Hi folks, we screwed a part up. Let's TIG fix it, remachine it, and see what we learn. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. Jonathan Lewis, Superior Welding, also from the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast. We are here at the Beta TIG training class. There's Roy Crumrine, a couple guys taking the class. Then can we plug weld, whatever you call it, TIG that in? It's a piece of just cold rolled steel. Absolutely. And then I'll interpolate it back out um, and re tap it. Absolutely. Cool. We can do that for you. Can we, can we do that right now? We can do that right now. Sweet. There's two ways we can fix it. We can try to chamfer the hole and fill it in from both sides. Okay. Or we can grind this out completely, fill oh. it in, and build it real back up. Hmm. There's two ways you can do it. Yeah, so I would rather that proud edge. It's kind of hidden, but I'd rather not break that surface if okay. I don't have to. So we can just drill it or you need chamfer it. it out in there. Okay. And then so you want sides. me to go just put a deeper chamfer into yeah. that? Put a chamfer in just like these. Yeah, right, on each end. Where it reaches almost. The center. Each, each way. Cool. All right, center. I'll be right back. Good. I'll be right. that. So you guys have been using aluminum, well, working on aluminum, so you'll switch to a different filler? Yep, yeah, we're going to switch to uh, carbon steel now. Carbon, yeah. carbon steel and all the stainless steel for the rest of the day. Cool. Just introduce them to that for a little awesome. while. Awesome. Yep. Cool. Got it. You want to know? Right, right. Clean. If you don't clean it, you just won't get good cotton, you won't get good bonding? It'll just smoke really bad. Oh. Okay. I mean, for this, it just... Uh, but it could burn nasty. through it. It's just cleaning it off. More than cleaning it off, just to keep it clean more than anything else. Okay. Keep the smoke out of your face. Yeah, sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to fill this in from the very, very bottom, and build it up and out, and then flip it over and do the other side. Got it. And if we don't get far enough on this side, we just chamfer it out a little bit deeper on the other side, and we're done. Got it. This is regular mild steel, right? So Correct. <laughs> you heard that from just the buzzing noise? Yeah. So you want the tungsten long enough, sticking out to get down inside of there. Yep. It's a small cup because we were welding aluminum. And since we're doing this really quick, it doesn't, it'll be fine for what we're doing. making sure you get it down far enough. Now that we've got it sealed shut. Wow, just, that really dumps some heat into that thing. Yeah, it dumps heat into it. It's a small little, small wow. little guy. That's crazy though. Sorry. Sorry. Got the, the scale coming off of it. Yep. It's off. So now we'll just build it up and flip it over and yep. build the other side up. machine too much of it off right so we don't want to get too much ex excess you know, above what you want to fill because that nope. just causes the machine to extra time we did cut the edge off here so we'll put a bead across here so you can you get some your sharp edge again and now when you um when i go to machine that do i need to think about the hard like is that going to work harden or should, it, should, should should be just should a mild steel mild equivalent steel. Should, yep should be seventy thousand psi yeah so okay. you would use your feeds and speeds for okay. seventy thousand. So I'm going to put a bead across here so you can remachine and have your, your uh, nice sharp edge. Man, i got to say, I don't miss hearing that buzzing from aluminum. Yeah, it gets annoying after all day. 
So the key thing is when you're doing a repair like this is to make sure that you get it above surface. Okay. Because the worst thing you can do is send it to your machinist and have him deck that off. Yeah. And then be like, hey, guess what? It's too low. So I'll look at it once we flow this other side up and we'll mm -hmm. see if we made it. See if we can get down inside of here. When you look inside when it cools down, you yep. see how it's completely filled in. And so when you go and you tap that, yep. once again, there shouldn't be any voids in there. Yep, should be that's, solid. That's the whole goal right there. Okay. Now, if I were worried about the discoloration or the performance of this material, could I have either a heat sink or something on, clamped to the section of it? Mm -hmm. And so we're, we try to keep the heat concentrated only in the tip? You could. Yeah. Okay. It would help reduce the overall heat input into the part. Yep. And that's not going to bother you doing a good weld on the tip. As long as I can still get down inside of there. Yeah. I mean, ideally, we would use a bigger cup for this. Yep. But, you know, just a quick, quick and dirty. Quick job. Yeah, quick, sure. dirty example for you. Because now we're just going to do the same thing. Build it right up. We'll probably nip this edge off. And if we do, no big deal. Yep. Build it up and be done with it. I can see how you're you're dropping a puddle and then you're really making sure that you melt it into yeah, the base it material. The yeah. Because the thing is, if you start welding onto the sidewalls, yep. the very bottom of you'll have an avoid, basically. Yeah. Yep. And when you go and re-tap that, not a good thing. If you're drilling right through it, no big deal. Yeah. But if it's on the sidewall, especially when you're tapping it, yep. it can be a bad thing. And like I said, you just don't want a part to come back from a machinist. Yeah. Well, and that's my plan. I'm going to probably interpolate this hole back out with an end mill so I don't need to worry about a high-speed steel drill Hitting the heart. Off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that'll be your best bet, honestly. So post flow gas. Post flow gas. Hold up. It does. It it should have been turned up, but it'll be fine for mild steel. Yeah. So we look at this across the surface and make sure that when you cut that off, you still get your straight edge. If yep. that's what the customer desires or what they want. Yep. But like I said, the most important thing is to make sure it's above flush. Yep. When you look right here, here's what I would say would be questionable. When you go to deck that back off right yep. there, your yep. best bet if you're doing this kind of repairs yep. is add more material. Add more up. Okay. It's easier to take it off for a machinist yep. than it is to bring it back to a welder yep. and, add, and have it put more back on. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and add more more. And any, you know, we're using some Lincoln, some uh, Everlast, the Millers, any of those TIGs could do this any repair. Yeah. I grabbed this one because it had the smallest torch. That's funny. <laughs> that's yeah, it. that's really cool. So give it a once over just to make sure that when you go and you spend your time. The thing is, is the machinists don't want to see a part. No one wants to see a part that goes to them. They get two hours machining into it or an hour, ten minutes. Then they gotta have to come back and you know add more filler to it. Yep. I've had it happen. It happens. But, right. You know. Yep. So let's go. Uh, let's go machine. We'll let it cool and then let's go uh, machine this and fix it up. Awesome. awesome. Hey, Jonathan. Thanks, man. How's class going? You're welcome. It's going really well. Awesome. Very well. Everybody's doing very well. Good news, hole is fixed and the new tapped hole is square. That's great. Bad news is we learned a lesson. You saw Zach machining this. Zach is our summer intern. He's in a, he's in a local high school machining program. He's doing a great job. When this got machined, 
it's slightly undersized. And he referenced off the opposite edge. It's supposed to be 1.5, it's about 1.472. So super common thing uh, to happen, super easy to happen. And so when it went around the tip, as you saw there, it was off center. The outside profile would not have mattered. The center hole does matter, that is critical. This is one of the most common problems I see is when they people flip parts or they do second and third off work. Where do you reference from and is that a good datum? He picked right back up using Fusion 360, remade the part on his own, worked great. Thread was tapped correctly this time. I think that's still a win, a really good outcome. And it was cool. I've never done a TIG repair like that uh, and it worked pretty darn well, absent our own goof. Scotch Bright Wheel did a really good job. I thought blending that in and stick around. We're gonna try the home Caswell Black Oxide Kit. We'll see how this one turns out after it was Scotch Brighted. Thanks for watching folks, take care. See you soon. <laughs>